Hello and welcome to today's episode of Culture Beyond Covid. Are you a cultural and creative professional sometimes lost between terms such as innovation, investment, technologies, digitizations or competitiveness? Well, it's actually no surprise because EU funding programs like these terms and often make use of them. And that is also the case with today's programs, Digital Europe and Invest EU. So today we will try to entangle the different programs and see what they offer for cultural and creative projects. However, I have to tell you one disclaimer in advance, and that is that both programs explicitly focus on uh, companies and small and medium-sized enterprises, and therefore they are more interesting and more suitable for cultural and creative industries. But we will have a look at it now in more detail. So, first of all, we start with Digital Europe. Digital Europe is supporting the digital transformation of Europe's economy and society and with its implementation, the EU aims at improving and fostering the digital capacities and also to expand and facilitate the access and use of digital technologies, which is also supposed to help recover from the current pandemic. Thereby, citizens and businesses, as well as public administrations, shall profit from the digital transition. In general, as you can also see here, Digital Europe provides financial support in five key areas, even though you only see four here. I will explain that in a second. So, uh, in general, it has a budget of 6.7 billion euros for the upcoming seven years. And you see the priorities of supercomputing, artificial intelligence and cybersecurity. And the fourth aspect uh, encompasses two of the priorities, which is on the one side digital skills and on the other side the wide deployment and accessibility of digital technology. So what does that actually mean for the cultural and creative industries and who can actually profit from this program? So the target group of Digital Europe includes stakeholders and companies from the innovation and research sector and this also includes organizations from the cultural and creative industries. But now let's move on and see what's actually in it for culture. Here you can see two of the priorities of the program and those are the ones where cultural and creative industries can benefit from. On the one hand, we have deployment and best use of digital capacities. Financial support in this field aims at ensuring that the public sector and also areas of public interest are able to access and use digital technologies and to adapt to new digital trends. In the field of culture, projects shall provide creators and creative industries in Europe with access to the newest digital technologies, ranging from artificial intelligence to advanced computing. Furthermore, cultural heritage shall be exploited through digital means in order to promote cultural diversity, social cohesion and European citizenship. The second aspect, advanced digital skills, encompasses support for designing trainings for students, IT professionals, entrepreneurs and small business leaders and the related workforce in order to improve their digital skills and contribute to their professionalization. And this also includes companies and uh, employees from the creative industries. So this is where we are standing right now with Digital Europe. It is, of course, just a current um, impression because we are still waiting for the final program to be adopted. So now let's move on to InvestEU. Here you have an overview of InvestEU. It provides essential support to companies and emphasizes that private investments are in line with the EU's policy priorities and currently those are especially the European Green Deal and digitization. 
It has in general four policy windows or priorities, which you can also see here. I will only explain them on the second slide in a bit. What is important here is that the overall budget uh, that is currently negotiated is supposed to be 9.4 billion euros. However, through the financial support and the bank loans facilitated by the program, it shall facilitate investments on a very large scale and the amount of money that is made available to the beneficiaries is uh, yet to be known. So this is something that is still not really clear, but we hope we can provide more detailed information once the program is adopted. So, as I already said, the main target groups are companies and small and medium sized enterprise. And this also uh, means that the cultural and creative industries, media, journalism and the audiovisual sector are part of the program and can have access to invest EU support. So what's actually in it for culture? Let's have a look at it right now. Actually, for cultural projects, there are several possibilities. However, as I already said in the beginning, the program man mainly addresses the cultural and creative industries due to the emphasis on companies and enterprises. You can see here all four policy windows that I also mentioned earlier, and they all include opportunities for cultural and creative industries. Nevertheless, what I want to highlight here is that the support for SMEs and the field of social investment and skills are probably the most interesting and most important for you and maybe also the most accessible ones. The support for SMEs also includes the former COSMA program that still runs under the current program and aims at improving the accessibility and availability of financial support for small and medium enterprises, which, as you know, are very often part of the cultural and creative industries. Under social investment and skills, financial support aims at improving social infrastructures, inclusion and integration of vulnerable people, promoting education and training, as well as cultural activities that contribute to all of these aims. So, as I said, these are the most tangible areas of support. However, under the aspects of sustainable infrastructures and research, innovation and digitization, there will probably also be opportunities for cultural and creative projects to be funded. However, this is uh, still uh, rather vague. The last aspect is the so-called guarantee facility for the cultural and creative sector which used to be part of Creative Europe and from 2021 onwards will be part of InvestEU. It aims at facilitating the access of cultural and creative stakeholders to bank loans and financial support. However, this depends on the individual member states that have to make arrangements with their national banks and the EU. So far, only very few member states have put it into practice and it remains to be seen how this will be implemented in the future. So this is where we are currently standing with Digital Europe and InvestEU. As always, the information is just showing a current impression of the ongoing negotiations, so it's not the final program that we know of. As soon as we have the concrete programs and its general guidelines, we will of course keep you posted and inform you about concrete opportunities in these and also in other EU funding programs. So um, we still have to be patient, but until then you can also enjoy our next interview with Sylvia Aman, who is actually an expert in the field of EU cultural policies and who will share with you her visions and ideas about culture and creativity in times of COVID-19 and beyond. So I hope to see you next week and bye bye.